Welcome to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shalby, and this week we're looking into the lacy and racy world of lingerie. The word is French, and with good reason. The country boasts a strong and long-standing tradition of lingerie design and production, which might explain why French women are the world's most avid consumers. In France, what's under your clothes counts. Sales of lingerie are going strong. In 2016, the French spent 2 billion 800 million euros on undergarments, the same as in 2015. On average, French women spend 129 euros on their scanties in 2016. Of this, 100 euros went on lingerie. 15 to 24 year olds spent more than any other age group. Teenagers and young women are shelling out 192 euros a year on pants and bras. They buy cheaper pieces, but they replace them on a regular basis to keep up with the latest fashion trends. This habit seems to be lost with age. In France, the older a woman gets, the less she spends. 163 euros a year for 24 to 30 year olds, and it goes down to 104 euros a year for the 45 plus. French women buy roughly the same amount of lingerie in supermarkets as they do on the internet, 20% of the market. But what about men? They account for 7% of the lingerie market, 87% of married men have bought it for their partners, and 13% for their mistresses. Well, the country's love affair with lingerie has, of course, evolved and adapted through the ages. And its intimate nature means the garment has always followed and sometimes even contributed to women's emancipation. Let's take a trip back in time to the premises of those French staples that are brassieres, corsets and corsages. Today's corsets may be about creating a slimmer, sexier look, but in the past they were nothing less than instruments of torture for the women who wore them. The first ones in France date back to the 1500s. An iron bodice was used to hold women of the aristocracy upright. That, it was thought, would rein in any loose morals. The materials used to make corsets became gentler on the torso, but the trend over the centuries was to tie them tighter and tighter. By the end of the 19th century, that S-shaped figure drew strong criticism. And in 1905, there was a shift with the birth of the bra. The corset was split in two. In came the bra for the top part of the body, and then the panty girdle below. The shoulders were used to hold the chest area up, to avoid the pressing on the torso area. Women often remained naked under their dresses when they weren't being bound up. And then, in the 1850s and 60s, in came the wearing of cotton breeches under hoop skirts. That style became shorter from the First World War onwards till the arrival in the 60s of the women's underwear we can recognize today. Lingerie design had to adapt to easier to wear skirts. Tights came into vogue, a revolution for women at a time of sexual liberation. A key part of the change was the widespread use of nylon. Nylon was more of a luxury product initially, and then became increasingly used in lingerie manufacture. And that was a real revolution. At a time, the French lingerie sector was industrializing. Nylon wear was easy to wash. It dried easily and didn't need any ironing. French lingerie moved with the times, the androgynous, linear look so popular in the 60s gave way to a more glamorous feel in the 70s and 80s. The French fashion take on underwear hit its height a decade later, with Madonna touched for the very first time in Jean-Paul Gaultier Bustier. There was then a return to a more tempered down look in the noughties, Centuries after the first corset came on the scene, French women are free of any pressure to wear them, but their wardrobe shows that classic French lingerie design remains a key part of their savoir flair. <laughs> well, 
Well, new fabrics and production methods mean that the world of lingerie is more diverse and innovative than ever before. And I've come here to meet one of France's up-and-coming brands of lingerie, Ma Petite Culotte, or My Little Panties. And I'm joined by the CEO and founder, Charlene Goutel. Hello, thank you for being with us. Bonjour, merci. Could you start at the beginning, perhaps? What's the difference between underwear and lingerie? Lingerie is different. The word lingerie is synonymous with corsetry, which is the art of making brassieres. You have to bear in mind that a bra can be made of 40 different pieces, sourced from up to 20 different fabric and accessory suppliers. So it's highly skilled work that demands serious savoir-faire, a know-how that's actually French. And how close is the world of lingerie to the other French universe of fashion? Lingerie is actually quite apart from the world of ready-to-wear fashion, in the sense that it's not subject to the same trends, that we don't have a lingerie fashion week with catwalk shows. Of course, each brand stages its own little events, but it's less centralized. And that's a good thing, because it gives us freedom, a chance to stand out more, which is what we aim to do here, by creating original and timeless designs. And as you said, you're a young brand. How do you compete with the big players? Our strategy is really to offer something different. We try to be innovative in everything we do, including the way we sell our products. Our only sales platform is online. And then there's the showroom, where our customers can get to know our brand, touch and try our designs. And finally, we also have a sales offer that's specifically tailored to men, because 35% of our customers are men. Now, here in France, there's been a recent change in the legislation concerning the use of Photoshop in changing women's bodies, the, the models' bodies. Has that had any impact on the word of lingerie and your particular experience? That's not how we work. To start, our photo shoots are done in-house by my business partner, which means we have control over those images. And also, we choose models our customers can identify with. For instance, our muse wears a size 38 to 40. Her bra size is 90B, and we don't touch up her body in pictures. She's very natural, and that authentic style is something that's a part of our brand identity. Now, we've mentioned uh, the French style. What about the Made in France drive? How, what's your, your rapport with that particular uh, aspect of French lingerie? First of all, Made in France refers to a French tradition of lingerie making. However, today it's extremely complicated to manufacture lingerie in France. Most of the workshops belong to big brands, so they're not open to smaller brands like ours. It's a know-how that's all but disappeared here in France which is why much of the manufacturing has been relocated abroad, in our case, to Portugal, Tunisia, and to Morocco. And interestingly, workshop owners are often French, as is the case in our main workshop in Tunisia. Charlene Goudel, thank you very much for having spoken to us. Merci beaucoup. Well, as we've just heard, keeping the lingerie tradition exclusively on French soil can be a massive challenge. And as Aurore Dupuis found out, it's one that few brands are willing or able to take on. Sexy yet comfortable. French lingerie is loved by women across the world. So what's the designer's secret to stand out in such a competitive market? Etam is France's number one underwear brand. The family firm is more than 100 years old, and for its couturiers, tradition is key. In this brand new tech centre, workers still use traditional sewing machines to produce more than 6,000 prototypes a year. The French savoir-faire is being lost. Training centres dedicated specifically to corsetry no longer exist. That's the reason we decided to develop our own training centre to protect our know-how. Etam is designed in France, but not made in France. The prototypes designed here are then sent to Asia and Northern Africa. The aim, reduce costs and boost margins. On the shelves of department stores, bras and panties 100% made in France are hard to find. 
It's a niche market because production capacity is low. Many factories relocated abroad two decades ago. The lingerie market is, however, a market that's constantly on the move, with many emerging brands. And they often start producing underwear in France to launch their brand and to make a name for themselves. And to make a name for themselves, many young designers go for luxury lingerie. Paloma Casil opened her shop a few years ago. Where does that come from? From Cali. <laughs> Such lace is one of the finest in the world, but it also shows on the price tag. One bra costs up to 300 euros. The fabric and production costs are three to five times higher than in the rest of the world. A lot more technical work is put into these products, so they're bound to be more expensive. But don't you worry, high-end lingerie isn't just for the rich and famous. In this Paris suburb, a cottage has been turned into a fitting room for a few hours. Our breakups range from A to F. The products are French? Absolutely. Our products are made in two factories in France, in the Dora and Epinal regions. The brand Allende sells its bras directly at home. There's no shop and therefore no rent, loosening their customers' purse strings. Just because we're grandmothers doesn't mean we can't be seductive. <laughs> it's a beautiful brand that respects French arts and crafts and uses an impeccable technique. Renowned for its savoir-faire and its creativity, France is the biggest lingerie exporter in Europe. Well, that's why we're leaving this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24.